Hello everyone, we were discussing about the parts of a leaf and in the previous video we had uh, left in the stipules and ligules and then the video was exceeding the, the time limit so I had to hurry and in this video I have two pictures which can clear the concept of stipules and ligules. Let us see the pictures there. Okay, I see that you cannot see the first picture very clearly let me bring it to the front yes so this one is the picture of ligule and that one is for stipule so this stipule as i had mentioned in the previous video is a structure pointy structure growing from the hypopodium or the uh, point where the leaf is attached to the stem you can see a very uh, clear picture of the stipule and then the ligule also sounds somewhat the same in the previous video I felt it and this picture will clarify the things even more you can see that the stipules are uh, another type of organ like the leaf is an organ the stem is an organ the root is an organ of a plant you can compare it to an organ this stipule is another type of organ which has grown from the hypopodium but the ligule is just an extension of the stem see the this is a grass which is Indian grass okay so Indian grass we can find the ligules so from where the leaf uh, of the grass grass is mainly a composed of leaf only so from where the leaf starts beside that you can see that the stem portion has not terminated at that point but has been extended a little bit upward and then terminated and this extension is called a ligule I hope it is clear now. It is very confusing concepts of stipules and ligules. Now let us move on. Okay, so parts of a leaf. We had discussed about the hypopodium. Now we will discuss the mesopodium and the epipodium. Okay, so let us draw the parallel lines indicating the stem. We have our hypopodium point of at attachment the mesopodium petiole and the leaf blade which is the epipodium like this so the as i have mentioned in the previous video this is the mesopodium and it is also called the petiole so nothing much is there in the mesopodium area but there are some terms let me first mention this is the mesopodium of the petiole okay so this is the let me choose black color. Mesopodium or PTO. Okay. Sorry. PTO. Yes. So, this PTO may or may not be present in leaves of plants. Generally, it is present, but it may not be present also. So, we have different terms to describe the presence of petiole or not. First of all, there is a petiolate leaf, which is the normal leaf. And if the petiole is not present, we call it a sessile leaf. Sessile. Sessile leaf, we call it when petiole is not present. So basically what happens is this area will not be present so if I draw another leaf in the same branch uh, sessile leaf so it will arise like this okay and this will be called a sessile leaf okay so let me mark it like this very good no PTO sessile leaf another there is another type of classification which is between the petiolate leaf and the sessile leaf and as you have guessed it is the sub sessile leaf where the petiole is short like let's say this short petiole there is a standard length of a petiole and if it appears to be short there is no such boundary strict boundary that if it is less than this much it is short but if, a, if it looks short by intuition we call it a sub sessile leaf it will be very short very short okay compared to this then we will call it a subsessile leaf another terms are there 
in the pitule pitule can have modifications so let us let me show that to show that I have to clear all this okay so first of all there can be the wing pitule as present in citrus that is the lemon and sweet pea okay so what does a winged petiole look like there is some structures growing on both the sides of the petiole and these structures look like the leaves only they are small leaves you can see but they are not the leaves they are called the wings of the petiole and it is present in the citrus and the sweet pea as I said so let me just write it down winged petiole black color will be better wing petiole example citrus and what to call citrus and sweet pea okay. so the two typical examples which come in exams there can be many more examples sweet pea okay. so wing petiole let us clear it again Hope you have seen it. Okay. Now there are ten driller petioles. So, if you are watching my previous videos, I have discussed about properties of stem, modifications of stem. All stem are not erect as we think of think them. They can be climbing stems also. And for the climbing stems, there are some structures which arise from the stem. Or the nodes of the stem and they help in climbing so what happens in a what happens in a tendril petiole is that there are there is the stem which is not a hard structure it is a structure like this and how it is standing erect it is standing erect by the petioles. The petioles are loose and tendrilar and helps in coiling with the supports. Okay, so long loose tendrilar petiole helps in coiling with the support and as usual as the leaf at one end. Okay, so this type of structure is called the tendrilar petiole. Like this, okay. Anyways, this is the tendrilar petiole and example is garden nasturtium. Okay, let us move on. Another type of petiole can be there, a modification of petiole which is the phyllode. This also I discussed in this modification of stem which is phyllode is a small part of the stem which becomes photosynthetic and this part can photosynthesize that as I told it becomes photosynthetic and he related to this you can remember cladode just doing revision cladode is when the whole stem becomes photosynthetic so phyllode when the small portion of the stem becomes photosynthetic where this small portion when it is the petiole it is called the uh, uh, clad, uh, phyllode mod modification of petiole called phyllode so what is the example of this example can be acacia okay so it is quite good now let us move on to epipodium so again let me draw the same old diagram for epipodium okay there is the stem let me draw it quickly and don't get disturbed by the sounds in the background i cannot help i am helpless for that anyways this is the petiole there is our leaf let us draw it very large okay so this leaf blade in most dicot leaves have two distinct surfaces the upper surface is called adduxial surface or the upper surface or the ventral surface these terms are very confusing so let me mention this is the upper surface and it is called the Aduxial. Let me use a black color. Sorry, sorry for the sound. Aduxial. Aduxial. 
surface or the ventral surface I always used to forget this names or confuse this name so I am mentioning it very clearly over in this video ventral surface or the common upper surface it is very easy upper surface everybody will say the upper surface but in scientific terms it is called adaxial or the ventral surface and the surface which is behind the leaf how will I show that let me think uh, let's put dotted line this surface okay, this surface is called the abaxial surface or the dorsal surface or the below surface or the lower surface okay so let me write it again down a abaxial surface sorry my keyboard is doing problem a abaxial surface a keyboard abaxial surface or the dorsal surface dorsal surface or the lower surface anyways these are the two surfaces of the leaf and as you may have imagined the leaf also contains the veins as we commonly call them the veins and it can be parallel or reticulate formation. Let me show the reticulate formation. It will be better. Like this. The main main vein, which is the midrib. And there it comes out branches. And there are so many branches. Let me draw still here. No need of wasting time. Okay. So, the main, main vein, which is called the midrib which you have studied in lower classes nothing very important over here midrib midrib and there are the branches and this is the reticulate venation and these veins are actually the vascular bundle that is the vas vascular supply to the leaf is done by the veins so as the vascular bundle enter this flat surface the vascular bundle has some thickness so that in the region of the veins the leaves become thick and it will be very clear if we look at the abaxial or the dorsal surface of the leaf it is very thick uh, in these uh, leaves so that is another part um, another property of the epiphodium and there are many types of margins of the leaf so this margin can be of various designs and there are various names for that we will not go to through so much detail but let me mention the name you can if you are interested you can search it in google and there are uh, very good photos in the google images portion you will learn about them let, but let me mention the uh, names of the margin some names of the margin i all, i also don't remember all the names of the margin uh, okay so leaf margin can be entire which is smooth there can be wavy there can be dentate there can be Retioserate, there can be lobed, there can be crenate, etc. etc. Okay, so you can understand how complex it is. Then also, this can be the leaf apex is modified in a various patterns like obtuse, it can be, it can be chordate, it can be micronate, it can be acuminate, and all these. And all these are high level stu studies in botanics. If you want to do, you can do. And the shape of the leaf can be there. Uh, shape of the epipodium and the leaf surface can be glabrous or the glossius or sub glabrous etc so these are what up everything about the epipodium i'm not going into too much detail about the epipodium it will take many videos to explain all this in very uh, minute way or to show all the pictures so i'm not going into too much detail if you want you can do i'm saying so many times anyways and there are Classification on the basis of leaf duration, yes, that is important. Leaf duration. Leaf duration. Duration. Okay, and on the basis of leaf duration, we can divide the leaf into three parts. 
that is the first part is audacious leap let me write it down you might have heard these terms these are very common terms audacious leap if you have not heard don't get upset okay then can be deceitious leap okay. so Desi Dios Leaf and there can be a last evergreen leaf. This year you might have heard. Must have heard I should say evergreen leaf. But I will explain them in short. Evergreen leaf. Evergreen leaf. Okay. So what is a cordaceous leaf? A leaf which falls down just after the plant takes birth or the plant comes out from the soil. That type of leaf is called a cordaceous leaf and it is very very useless but it is useful for some types of plants which are in the desert because these plants do not, do not want to lose their water to the surface of the leaves through a process called as transpiration as we all know and the example you can get is a dairy all types of desert plants like opuntia. Okay, next is the deciduous leaf. Deciduous leaves uh, refer to the leaves which are annual, means which shed off at the time of the autumn season. And most plants are there. Uh, uh, some examples are poplar, mulberry, and there are many more examples. And persistent or evergreen leaves are the leaves which remain for more than one year. Yes, except that leaves have to fall down some day or the other they cannot be they cannot live for the infinite time but they live more live live more than one year so we call them evergreen leaf or the evergreen plant you have heard about evergreen plant remains green all the duration means when one leaf falls out till then two two or more leaves have also taken birth so this plant looks evergreen it's all time green not uh, when some plants in autumn shed their leaves and become non green so that was the leaf duration and that's all for the video and then in the next video we will talk about phyllotaxy and uh, all these compound leaves we can we will talk about paraffinate unipinate everything so see you in the next video bye bye